throughout time, people across the world told each other tales of how they came to be, of heroes and monsters, romance and tragedy, death and rebirth. Mythology helped shape the ancient world, explaining the unexplainable. This is Mythology Unleashed. In modern fantasy stories, the archetype of an evil sorcerer is among the most common of characters. Arguably, the earliest example of a dark wizard with awe-inspiring magical powers and an aptitude for cruelty comes from Slavic mythology and Russian folktales. A figure known as Koshe the Deathless. Though his physical appearance is rarely given in great detail, he is often described as old, ugly, and decrepit, with many depictions of him showing him as a gaunt individual, like a skeleton with flesh wrapped tightly across the bone. Other accounts portray him as a tall, gangly man with long white hair and a beard, with stories and art showing him riding his enchanted horse, fully nude across the steppes of Russia. Through endless study and gruesome experimentation, Cachet the Deathless was a powerful sorcerer with an assortment of magical powers and artifacts at his command. He could change his shape and may appear as a giant, as a fearsome beast, a handsome man, or a whirlwind. There are tales of him changing others into various creatures such as frogs or snakes, into stone or ice, or even into walnuts. He could defy gravity, fly across the land at great speeds, place people under a deep sleep or into a deep trance, enchant any woman he so desired, and kill any foe with the slightest incantation. By all accounts, Cachet should have nothing to fear. And yet, there was one thing that filled him with dread his own death. Utilizing dark magic from a bygone era, Cachet cast a spell to remove his soul from his body and placed it within a needle. He then hid the needle inside of an egg, the egg inside of a duck, the duck in a hare, the hare in a large iron chest, the chest buried beneath a green oak tree on the mystical island of Buyan said to disappear upon the tide. Should anyone succeed in finding the island, the tree upon it, and the chest buried underneath, the hare would run. Should the hare be killed, the duck would escape on the air. So long as the needle and its egg capsule remained intact, Cachet would be safe from any and all harm done to his body, granting him the title, Cachet the Deathless. But should his enemy reach the egg, Cachet's life would be truly endangered. According to myth, possession of the egg alone was enough to gain control of the sorcerer. Should the egg be broken, particularly upon Cachet's forehead, the needle within it would break as well forcing hundreds of years of age down upon Cachet in a single instant, obliterating him, vanquishing the villain once and for all. Cachet acts as the antagonist of a number of Russian folktales collected in Andrew Lang's The Red Fairy Book and Alexander Afanyasov's Russian Fairy Tales. The stories that feature Cachet often have him pursuing young women who are disgusted by him, and entail just how cruel he can be towards others, how powerful his magic is, particularly when in pursuit of that which he desires, and of how he eventually, inevitably dies. In the story of Tsarevich Peter, Cachet abducted the Tsaritsa of Tsar Bel Belyanin. After weeks of searching, the Tsar's council informed him that the Tsaritsa was abducted by the evil wizard. They told the Tsar that to battle Cachet and attempt to rescue his wife would be futile, 
for Cachet's realm and his castle were beyond three times nine lands, with the most splendid palaces atop the highest, most inaccessible mountains in Russia, with each palace surrounded by enchantment. Heartbroken, yet determined to save his wife, the Tsar sent criers into far-off kingdoms, offering wealth and honors to whomever could save the Tsaritsa. Daring heroes and great generals came in response from all sides, each promising valiant deeds. And Tsar Bel Belyanin bade each take from the royal treasury sufficient gold for their needs. But those scores arrived and thus rode away. There came no news of the missing Tsaritsa. On the brink of madness and poverty, the Tsar's three sons, Alexei, Dmitri, and Peter, all came to their father's aid. The Tsar sent out his eldest son Alexei, and when he returned without success, the Tsar sent out his second son, Dmitri, who, like his brother, failed to find Cachet and the Tsaritsa. So the youngest son, Peter, set off to succeed where his brothers failed, to find the sorcerer and rescue his mother. After overcoming a series of natural and mystical obstacles, and with the aid of his crafty mother and some animal friends, Peter learns of and recovers the soul trapped within the egg. He then smashes it upon Cachet's forehead, saving his mother, the Tsaritsa, in addition to other beautiful captive maidens found in Cachet's dwellings. In the tale of Ivan Sosnovich, Cachet learns of three beautiful maidens in a far-off Tsardom, saved from the underworld by Ivan and his compatriots. He then proceeded to slay two of the maidens betrothed while dismembering a third, kidnapping the three women, and petrifying the rest of the kingdom. When Ivan hears of what happened, he and a team of excavators travel far into the highest mountains where Cachet made his lair to find the enchanted chest, this time buried beneath a mountain. Upon finally discovering the egg that held his soul, Ivan smashed it, killing Cachet and freeing the maidens before he saved the kingdom with the use of an enchanted guzli. Interestingly, the most prominent tale of Cachet the Deathless had nothing to do with the needle in the egg. At some point in time, Cachet was defeated by the warrior Maria Morevna and was imprisoned in a high tower, bound in a dozen chains behind a locked door, bereft of nourishment to drain his strength. Ten years later, Maria chose to go to war and left her husband, Ivan, in charge of the house, warning him not to set foot behind a certain door, for there was a secret she had long kept locked away there. But humans are a curious race, and Ivan was no exception. When Maria left, Ivan disobeyed her request and ventured behind the door, where he then met a decrepit old man locked in place with a dozen chains. Not knowing the man's true identity or his villainous nature, the old man begged Ivan for water, having been deprived of food and drink for a decade. Feeling sympathetic for him, Ivan provided the man with a dozen barrels of water. Almost immediately, the man was fully revived and restored, the weak shell withering away to reveal the powerful and nigh-invincible sorcerer that was Cachet. Empowered, Cachet broke free of the chains that bound him and declared revenge upon his captor Maria and vanished into thin air, his magic as fully restored as his body. Ivan at once embarked on a mission to rescue Maria, finding her and fleeing with her twice, only to be overcome both times by Cachet on his much faster steed. Ivan tried to battle Cachet, but this only resulted in him being slashed to ribbons and thrown into a barrel into the sea. 
However, Yvonne cheated death, as his three beloved sisters each had married powerful sorcerers, who located and revived the man. Yvonne was then instructed to retrieve a magic horse, one that could travel as fast, if not faster than Cachet, from Baba Yaga, an old cannibalistic sorceress who lived in a remote hut on chicken legs. He successfully completed the tasks Baba Yaga gave to him over the course of three days. Yvonne then stole Baba Yaga's fastest horse and raced off to Maria, determined to save her from Cachet's clutches. When Yvonne caught up with Cachet and Maria, he at last defeated the wizard. But unlike the other stories featuring Cachet, instead of him being defeated by the breaking of the needle in the egg, he was slain by either Yvonne's sword or a sharp kick to the head by Yvonne's steed, depending on the version. Regardless, the sorcerer's body was properly burned, and Cachet was finally dead. With so many differing accounts of who kills Cachet and how it is done, it can be hypothesized that it could have been different beings, all with the same powers, undergoing the same name and the same titles. Or even that Cachet returns from the grave some time after his defeats. Regardless of who defeats him and how, Cachet the Deathless remains a fascinating figure of Slavic mythology. With nearly unmatched magical prowess, unparalleled cruelty and greed, and nigh immunity to physical harm, it is of no wonder that he appears so frequently in myths and fairy tales of Russia, making him among the most enduring and most popular villains in folklore.